Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm answering now question number seven from the Solomon D collection of Mechanics M1 papers from Edexcel. And this is question number four from my end of topic worksheet on constant acceleration. And this question here is about um, some guy, Jim, who looks over the edge of a cliff, which is 122.5 meters in height above the sea. He dislodges a stone and the stone falls freely from rest towards the sea below. So freely under gravity. So we've got to ignore the effect of air resistance. We've got to calculate the time it will take for the stone to reach the sea. So just imagine he's at the top of a cliff here. And cliff is 122.5 meters high. Okay, above the sea, 122.5 meters. And the sea's down here. And there's a stone that he dislodges. So when he dislodges the stone, it's going to fall down towards the, the sea. And its initial speed is going to be zero meters per second because it's been dislodged. It's just not like he's throwing it down, just like it dislodges and it starts to fall. So it starts from zero meters per second. Okay, so calculate the time it will take for the stone to reach the sea. So it's going to fall under the effect of gravity. It's going to start going down. So I'm going to put down as positive. I always like to take the initial direction of something's movement as positive in my calculations. And it's falling under the acceleration due to gravity, which is acting downwards as well. Right? So we can use SUVAT here because we have constant acceleration due to gravity. So we know S is, as I'm taking down as positive, and it's starting up here going downwards, that's going to be positive 122.5. The initial speed is zero. The final speed we don't know. The acceleration is positive G because I'm taking down as positive. And the time is what we have to find. So we've got to deal with S and U and A and T. Those are the things that we have to deal with. We know three of them. Fourth, we don't know. So we've got to think about our equations of motions. We should know the equations of motion. You know, V equals U plus AT, S equals U plus V over 2 times T, the average speed times the time is the, is the displacement. We should know that, um, you know, um, S equals UT plus a half AT squared, V equals U squared plus 2AS. We, can, we also should know S equals VT minus a half AT squared. So there's a certain formula that we should know before we go in the exam for sure. So here we've got S, U, A, and T. So that's going to be using S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So the thing we have to find is the time and everything else we know. So we've got here 122.5 equals U, which is zero times T plus a half times A is G, which I'm we're going to call 9.8 times T squared. So this is going to be zero. So you end up with 122.5 equals a half of 9.8 is 4.9 times t squared. So t squared is 122.5 divided by 4.9. So we're going to have the square root of 122.5 divided by 4.9, which gives us 5. That's um, t. I found the square root of it. So t is T is equal to five seconds. Five seconds. All right, so there's the answer to part A. Then it says, find the speed with which the stone would hit the water. Okay, so again, we've got SUVAP, but now we have this as five seconds. So we could, if you want to, uh, use another formula which involves T. Um, and we don't have, uh, you know, the other thing. So we could use, for example... If we if we don't, if we say we didn't have the time, we could use here. Um, can we use? Yeah, we could use v squared equals u squared plus two as. Okay, we could use that to find what v is. Okay, but as we have the time, all right, then we can use the time. Now, in general, I mean, it doesn't really. It'll probably be easier to use the time, but so supposing we got this wrong. Supposing we got the time wrong, then our answer. Um, for the next part would also be wrong if we use this. Okay, so because we're actually able to use v squared equals u squared plus 2as, 
which is more hassle here, but because we know what U is, we know what A is, we know what S is already given, and we're not using something that we found, this probably is the safer option, okay? Both of them should give the same answer, and I'll show you. I mean, this is a no problem. If you're confident about this answer being right, it's absolutely fine to use this. So you have V equals U, which was zero, plus A, which is um, 9.8 times T, okay, which is five. So it's five times 9.8, Okay, 5 times 9.8, that gives you 49, uh, 49 meters per second. And if you use this, we should get the same answer. We will get V squared equals U squared, which is 0, plus 2 times 4.9 times 122.5. Okay, so V is going to be the square root of all of that. So we have the square root of 2 times a 4.9 9.8 sorry 2 times 9.8 okay times 122.5 so the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 122.5 and she give us should give us exactly the same answer which it does okay so either of these are fine this is the safer option in case you got t wrong but, you know, if you've got T right, then there's no problem. You can use both of them. It's no problem whatsoever. Okay, so two alternative ways of finding what V is after you've found what um, the time is. Okay, <clears throat> so that's 49 meters per second. That's the answer, right? So two different ways of doing it. Then for part C, it says two seconds after the stone begins to fall, Jim throws a tennis ball downwards at the stone. The tennis ball's initial speed is u meters per second, and it hits the stone before they both reach the water. Find the minimum value of, of u, the minimum value of u. So he throws a ball down, okay, from this same height, okay, and he throws it with the initial speed of u meters per second, and it hits the ball, okay, it hits the ball before they reach the surface of the water, okay. So we want to find the smallest value of u. So, I mean, as the stone is falling, the faster that you throw the ball, the further up from the surface of the water, the ball will hit the stone. Okay, so the sto as the stone is falling, if you throw this really fast, it's going to hit the stone, you know, further up. Okay, so the minimum value of u would be, as I'm saying here, it's going to hit this. It's going to. It has to hit the stone before they reach the water. So the minimum value of u is if you have u such that the ball hits the stone at the point at which the stone hits the surface of the water. So they both have have to travel this distance of 122.5. Um, you know, in that you know, so the ball hits the the stone at the point where the stone hits the water. Okay, so we want to we want to find the the time. The, the value of u, okay, so we want to find the u such that, such that the ball hits, the ball hits the stone at the surface of the water. At the surface of the water. So basically what we're saying is they both have traveled the same distance, the same distance. So if we consider the stone, uh, the ball, Consider the ball, and we're going to use suvat here. We know it's traveled the same distance, 122.5 meters. We want it to have traveled that same distance at the point where it hits the stone. U is what we have to find. V we don't know. Acceleration is G. Now I'm taking down as positive again because it's going down. So A is G. And T is, well, it says um, two seconds after the stone begins to fall. Okay, so... The stone was in the air for five seconds, okay, as we worked out. So that means the ball would have been in the air for five minus two seconds, which is three seconds. Okay, five, it's the ball will be in the air for three seconds, two seconds less than the, okay, um, less than the, the stone. Okay, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be thrown two seconds after the ball starts to fall. So... The ball, the, sorry, two, two seconds after the stone starts to fall. So the stone has been falling for five seconds. Two seconds after it starts falling, the ball is thrown. So the ball is in the air for three seconds at the point where it hits the stone. 
Okay, so here we have the information we need. We want to find what U. So we have S, U, A, and T to deal with. So we can say um, S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared. So we have 122.5 equals U, which is what we have to find, times T, which is 3, plus a half times 9.8 times 3 squared. So the only unknown here is this 3. So we have 122.5 equals 3U plus, and that's going to be 9 times, so you're going to have uh, 9.8 times a half times 3. That gives us 14.7 times 9, sorry, times 3 squared, my bad, times 3 squared. So that gives you actually 441 over 10, so that's 44.1, that's 44.1. So you have 122.5 minus 44.1 equals 3u. So we're going to have 122.5 minus the answer. That gives us 78.4, so 3u equals 78.4. Therefore, the value of u is going to be 78.4 divided by 3, which is 26.1333, 26.1333. We're going to write our answer to 3sf. We could write it to 2sf as we used g, but I'll write my answer to 2sf. So it says find the minimum value of u. As it says already, u is in meters per second. They've got the unit there. We just have to write u as 26.1. I can write u as 26 if I want to because uh, we've used g in our calculation as 9.8. So 2SF is fine. So if I wrote 26 or 26.1, both of them would be fine. Okay, so there's the answer to part C of this question. Now for part D, it says, if you had taken air resistance into account in your calculations, what effect would this have had on your parts, part on your answer to part C. Okay, so now if you're throwing the ball down through the air and the stone is falling through the air, they're both experiencing air resistance. Okay, so we can say assuming that the stone is smaller than the ball, assuming the stone is smaller than the ball okay and and also knowing we know that its speed knowing that its speed its speed is less than the ball okay because the ball is thrown and the stone just falls okay therefore the stone experiences experiences less air resistance the stone experiences less air resistance okay less air resistance than the ball less air resistance okay than the ball okay therefore the ball must be thrown with a greater speed okay the ball must be thrown with a greater speed to hit the stone in time. Hit the stone in time. Okay. Therefore, U is increased. Okay, so that's a nice little explanation here because the ball, we assume it's bigger than the stone and also it's thrown faster. The bigger something is, the more air resistance it will experience. The faster it's moving, the more air resistance it will experience. That's what we should um, know about air resistance. And therefore, the ball experiences uh, a bigger air resistance than the stone. So therefore, it has to be thrown at a bigger speed for it to compensate for that extra drag so it reaches the stone in time before the stone hits the water so there's the answer to this question here from the uh, endotopic worksheet of a constant acceleration and solomon d question number seven <clears throat> i hope that was clear other questions from this particular solomon d paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here other questions from the constant acceleration worksheet number two 
um, can be found, uh, the, the endotopic worksheet number two, constant acceleration, can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. You can watch a video which explains to you how to use my channel in an efficient way uh, by clicking on the link over here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.